what is religious faith religion is the relationship between an individual and the god which is characterized by belief in the god reverence for god and the desire to please that god so the kind of a relationship that exists between a person and god is called as religious faith for patients who profess a religious faith the spirituality is usually closely allied with their religion if a person has religious faith then for them spirituality means it is closely connected with that particular religion and with that particular god patients with religious faith are less likely to have unmet spiritual concerns if the religious needs are met so if a patient has religious faith that can make them strong they may not have any unmet spiritual concerns and the spiritual needs if they have been met already then they can derive strength of that religious faith patients with a religious faith may have as much pain as any other patient but they may report it less because their faith may confer some uh, solace to their heart okay so it it can give them a kind of they, they'll be able to bear it uh, whatever pain they have whatever kind of suffering they experience out of the disease a person who has faith in a particular particular religion is able to accept it right so only when we don't accept our pain only when we don't accept our suffering then we make ourselves miserable and we make the people around us miserable if you are able to accept it to a certain extent then we don't make much of a complaint in palliative care setting a person's faith no matter how strong or weak will influence and be influenced by everything they experience as death approaches so if the patient is in a hospice if they are undergoing palliative care and if they have faith in a religion and their faith may be strong or weak some of the people are very religious some of them are now and then religious some of them will be religious only when they want something so it depends upon the person right so it will influence everything they experience right so the religion and the faith they have on the religion will have an impact on their sufferings will have an impact on their uh, experiences as the death approaches them most faith teach that biological death is not the end of life so in every religion in most of the religion uh, people think that death is not the end after death they say that there is a life after death so many of the religion has that belief believers are, comf are comforted so they say so when a person is terminally ill and when they are in the death bed they think that they will have another life right they will be born as a child to somebody each one has a different faith they believe that there is a life after death that there is something after death they believe that there is some life after death that the wrong doings can be forgiven and their good deeds will be credited so in many many religions there is a belief that if a person is bad if they have done plenty of uh, wrong things in their life as they approach death and when they plead to the god when they pray to the god when they have faith in god they think that they will be forgiven and if they have done plenty of good deeds plenty if they have helped uh, many people if they have done, if they have been good all their life then they feel that it will be credited they will be uh, recognized it will be awarded that god will look after those left behind even if there is nobody to take care of an individual they will think that god is there with them that god will take care of that particular person that god is forgiving god will always forgive our mistakes rather than condemning and punishing right so god is not there to punish every individual not as well for what they have done families sharing the same faith may help them cope better 
looking after a terminally ill relative. So in most of the families, it is like that. So the, all the family members, they follow a particular religion. Each family member does not uh, follow different religions. Of course, there are families where the members will follow different religious faith. But most in most of the circumstances, all the members belonging to a particular family will follow a particular religion and they have faith in that religion. And this will help them to um, understand, cope better to take care of the patient who is terminally ill. And it may be a source of comfort to the dying patient that confident that faith will help uh, those left behind. And this religious faith, people think, will take care of them when they are uh, when they are abandoned, when uh, they are uh, there is nobody to take care of them. People with a deep religious faith often find it gross as death approaches. So if a person is very religious, we may find that their faith in the religion will grow. So that is what we see uh, normally. Even now, if we see, we will, feel, we will find that the elderly people are more religious when compared with the other people. The other people as an adult, they may be engaged in different type of activities. And they, of course, they will devote some time to their religious practices and religious faith. But the elderly people are very much attached or very much attached to their God. And they have uh, religi religious faith is uh, more in the elderly people. So as the death approaches the patient who is undertaking palliative care, we find that they are more attached or they have more faith in their religion. For those with a less well-developed or less tested faith, impending death can be a major challenge to their faith. If they don't have a strong faith in the religion, then it can be a major challenge to the faith in the religion. Religion does not make living or dying easier. So after all, this religion or their faith in the religion is not going to make their life easy or it is not going to make their dying easy, though it may make both meaningful. But if they have a religious faith, their life will be meaningful and also their dying will become meaningful. Religion does not provide all the answers that people see. We have plenty of questions and the religion will not be providing all the answers for the questions that arise in the individual. People with unrealistic expectations of the religion are usually disappointed. So we should know that there are, there are limitations to the answers that we may get or derive out of religion. All our questions may, be, may not be answered from, by practicing a particular religion or by having faith in a particular religion. Some people expect miracles, right? So they say that when I get up tomorrow morning, all the disease, all the suffering must get, must get away from my body. So that's not possible. Miracles cannot happen. And some people expect answers to the unanswerable questions. So there are several questions which, has, which have no answers at all. Like, why should I suffer? Why should I get this disease? Why are there nobody to take care of me? Right. So these are some questions where there are no answers at all. And some expect immediate and sympathetic answers to their prayers. So if I pray now, they, they want result immediately. So such kind of things cannot happen. When these are not forthcoming, they may blame. So when they expect something, when they, get, when they, were, when they want relief immediately, when they want um, care, love, support immediately. And if it's not going to happen immediately, then what happens? They will start blaming their religion. They will start blaming their God. So they will blame God. I did th that for you, this for you. I offered so much. So I had been fasting for you for, the, for so many years. And why should I suffer? So they start blaming the religion. They even blame their God. And they will direct their anger that disappointment against the clergy. Clergy is the priest of that particular religion or their professional carers. So all this will turn into anger when their uh, answers are not, when their questions are not answered, when they don't uh, get uh, what they think they will get because of having faith or because of praying. 
because of offering prayers or doing certain rituals. So all these will develop into an anger and this anger will be directed to the person, the religious person or the person who is taking care of them. How should religious issues be handled in palliative care? There should be unreserved respect for an individual's religious beliefs and practices. So this is very important. The caregiver for the patient may belong to any religion, but the patient may belong to a different religion. So in spite of that, they should have respect for the religion that the patient follows, the faith they have in that religion or the practices they say that they should follow even as a patient. So they should have unreserved respect for the religious beliefs and also the practices of the patient. The patient or family should be asked about the religious matters, including prayer, how they pray, when they pray, why they pray, what type of food or what type of diet they practice or offer and the routines of the personal hygiene. So all these, um, all these points should be collected from the family members if the patient is not able to provide them details. The sacred practices including prayers. So how they pray, when they pray, what are the days, special days for them to offer prayer. The sacraments. Sacraments are the offering or the anointing with oils, Abhishegam, the burning of incense, uh, Udvati, uh, Udvati Kulutradu, and uh, when they fast, undertake fasting, Viradam or um, self-denial, special diets. Sometimes we, we uh, on certain uh, days, we have special food, like we eat food without salt, or we eat food without onions and uh, garlic. There are different type of um, diets that we take uh, when there are certain uh, viradam, okay? And baptism is, uh, uh, in Christianity, they call it as pudunanmaya uh, jnanasthanam. And other and um, many others are both respected and facilitated. So all these religious practices and, uh, and the rituals that are, for, that are uh, surrounding the religion, they should be respected by the palliative care volunteer or the person who is taking care of the patient. The manner in which individuals practice the religion must be respected. A patient's religious needs are assessed on an individual basis. So the religious need of one patient may not be same as that of another patient. You cannot conduct a group prayer when they are in a palliative care center because each one has a different mindset, they have different expectations, they follow different religions and their practices may also be different. No two people of the same faith are likely to have exactly the same religious needs. So that is what I told you. They don't have the same religious needs. Facilitate arrangements for their priest and teachers to visit them. So if it is possible, if the, person, the religious person can come and visit the patient, we can make arrangement for that. So in Christianity, we find fathers coming uh, coming to the hospital and praying for the uh, patient. So that is possible. In some religion, that is possible. So in that case, you can invite the priest to pray for that particular patient. Support them when their faith feels inadequate for what they are experiencing. So they have faith in the religion, but because of the faith, there is no improvement. Even if there is no improvement, we can show our support to the patient. They, you can say, even if... Uh, uh, God is not uh, there, there to give you 100% of what you expect. I can offer some support, you can say to the patient. Reassure them that the rights of the religion and culture will be fully respected after their death. So you have to give confidence in the patient and tell them that all the rights, all the rights that are surrounding their uh, death, the cremation, etc., everything will be done and with the uh, it will be fully respected even after the death of the individual. Many patients having previously denied any religious faith, some people when they are growing in their adulthood, they would say that there is no God, I don't believe in God, uh, etc. Right? But they may change if they uh, have some illness. And uh, this religious faith may come into, a pa uh, come into a patient if their illness worsens. And be comfortable 
talking about the religious and spiritual matters with doctors and nurses. So such patients who have drifted from uh, being, a, uh, being a person who has no concern about religion, say for example, if a person is an atheist, atheist is a person who has no, uh, who has no religious belief. So uh, a, an atheist can later during their um, illness or when they are in the deathbed, they may become associated with religion and they may start having faith in religion. So such persons, such persons may talk about the spiritual matters. They can dis they will discuss about the spiritual matters with their doctors or the nurses, but they will be reluctant and they will not, they will not want to show it off in front of the other uh, religious person.